Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take and take this side off. We're gonna shut the camera off, and then I'll show you how to do this one, the hind quarter. Okay, we'll be back. One of the most important things in butchering and also doing all your field dressing and anything with a knife is that you have a sharp knife. So, and he makes sure his knives are extremely sharp. So, just use caution when you're using them, but keeping them sharp is safer. Okay. Um, now this we're gonna do this hind quarter here. Um, clean it off. You know, I get just get paper towel. You need a rag or something. Um, there's bunches of fat and stuff. Um, Jonathan, can you grab me that bowl? Thanks. Yep. Throw your scraps, have a bowl for your scraps and stuff. That was exposed a good while to the air. Nothing really wrong with it, but I'm just going to take a real thin layer off of that. Um, make your get most of this off that you can there's like a thin membrane layer like and you don't have to go crazy you don't have to waste a lot of meat you don't have to you know, just cut that that off what you can there's this fat I like to get that off of there little thin layer of fat here um, some people say that this deer fat, a lot of deer fat will give the meat uh, kind of a different flavor, a kind of a weird flavor. I don't know, I guess maybe too much of it you would, it would, but I don't know. I grew up on deer meat, so yeah. don't uh, bother me none. Plus, you also have to keep in mind that your deer meat is not like beef it's not a fatty meat so if you don't have any fat in there you know you're really um, run into troubles too it helps you know it helps to put butter in your pan and you definitely need to with the venison and elk and that because they aren't fatty meats they are non GMO no preservative no hormone meats best you can get all right, um, what I do is I take my knife and I just scrape down my meat and I'll get uh, like hair, any hair and stuff that want, might be on your meat. You can just take it and just scrape it. It usually just comes, comes off there on your knife. The reason um, he mentions that too is because when you get this stuff here wet, it gets like a jellyfish. It actually it swells. Slimy and slimy in, and then it's it's hard to clean so it's actually easier to do what he's saying although some of you might crinkle your nose and think that it needs to be cleaned better it ends up being harder to clean if you wet it down so yeah, if you get get water on all that it uh it gets kind of yeah. <laughs> gets like a slime and you don't have to do take this off i'm just taking it off um for the, you know, I want to just get some of that fat. You can see that layer of fat there. Take this. Get some of that. You know, there's nothing wrong with eating that. You know, if you ground that into hamburger or whatever, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I eat plenty of it, and I'm still here to tell about it. <laughs> but, all right, so pretty much... Take some of this off right here. something to eat too. <laughs> They're spoiled already. Alright, so pretty much you got your hind quarter here. 
Um, now I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna flip this over. What I'll do is um, I'll take and cut right here. You can see where the joint was and that bone uh, where it went into the pelvis. What I'll do is I'll take this and I'll come basically just about a straight line come in across here um, right down to the bone all that bone down boom right down to the bone there flip this over right in right down same cut that back over now take and I'll just cut that bit right off of there um, and that can be used for a burger or you could make a roast out of it clean it up a little bit and make a make a roast out of it and we have used freezer paper in the past we've been blessed with a vacuum sealer so we now vacuum seal what's in our freezer you can also use the gallon freezer bags like ziploc bags to freeze your meat um, whatever you can afford but you definitely want to wrap it and get it in your freezer in good in good time and and uh, uh, make sure it's not all bloody when you freeze it so that your packages don't stick together in the freezer and make a mess of your freezer yeah all right so now I'm gonna put blood clot there um, at this point you can either make roasts out of this or you can make um, steaks out of it if you were gonna make steaks um, what you can do is just take and you know make thin slices right down along right straight across here just make you know a bunch of thin slices all the way down through and then if you have your meat saw cut that bone or if you don't want the bone in you know just take and cut down around the bone work it around and that'll give you a bonus steak. Um, roast, if you're gonna make a roast, um, basically, um, since we're doing um, burger, I'll show you making or show you how I do my roast. I'm, I'm gonna cut this off here, show you a steak, how I do a steak. And again, even when you're making steaks in a frying pan, like we fry ours, and um, low heat, longer time, longer cook time, um, really makes them really tasty. And deer meat is one of those things. If you've had deer meat and it has been really gamey and you didn't like it, it's probably because they passed that one minute rule. They cooked it just a little bit too long. And when you cook deer meat too long, or any game meat really, it'll get tough and it'll get kind of gamey tasting so or if it's if they didn't leave it hang yeah too it'll it'll get gamey but low low heat longer cooking time and just don't overcook your meats um, if you're a well done person you want to try doing these um, medium or medium well and seeing how they taste before you go cooking it to death because they really are tasty and have really good flavor and are really nice and tender when cooked Right. There's a nice burger. Thank you, baby. There's supper. Some nice uh, <laughs> little steaks, like. Um, so that's how you would do that, and you continue down to about roughly about here, and then you'd make the rest in the hamburger, cut it off the bone. Um, roast. Uh, let's see here. If I'm gonna make a roast, I'd come in. Um, say like right here in this part here, come straight in here, and down to the bone. Now there's all kinds of different ways you can do this, you know, people, everybody has their own way they like doing stuff, you know, 
Um, this is just how I grew up doing it, and I've done it, you know, I just do it that way. I learned it from my my parents, and that's just...